It's TK Friday, and today it's another full edit. This is a full edit TK Friday, and today it is the Faroe Islands. This is going to be a fun one, so sit back, relax, and stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm so glad you joined me again for another full edit TK Friday. Today's image comes to us from Marco Weber. This was taken at the Faroe Islands. I really love this image, and I do have an image for you to download as well as PDF notes so you could try this edit out for yourself. You'll find the links for the image as well as the PDF notes in the description below this video. Click more to open up that description or you won't see anything. So go ahead and do that. Download the notes as well as the image and give this edit a try. And as always, I start out in Lightroom. I'll just show you what I did here in Lightroom. And then we go into Photoshop and then we use the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, which is a lot of fun and it's a great plug in for editing images right inside of Photoshop. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, I'll have a link in the description below where you can pick it up. I highly recommend it and I use it for all my photo editing. Now you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15 at checkout and you'll save 15% off anything you purchase. And when you do that, I make a small commission and this helps me to keep these videos coming your way. And now let's dive right in. I really love this image. I love the moody look of it and I want to maintain that. So I got to really be careful with my editing that I don't destroy that. Now I'm starting out here in Lightroom and I'm using a linear profile for Marco's camera. It's a Sony. It's a pretty big file, by the way, when you download it. My goal in Lightroom is just to keep the image pretty flat because I'll use the TK9 plugin for Photoshop to do all the heavy editing on this image. So I want a really flat image and that is what the linear profile is all about. It gives me a really good starting point. As you can see, I've just done some minimal adjustments. And of course, I always use lens corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, enable profile corrections. And as far as detail, just a little bit of sharpening and really no noise reduction, just a little bit of color noise reduction. I did not crop this image. I like it just the way it is. And then at this point, I'll just right click on the image, go to edit in, click on edit in Photoshop 2024. But as I always say at this point, I'm already there. Welcome to Photoshop and welcome to TK9. Let's get started. This image has a lot of nice depth in it and I want to keep that. In the past couple uh, TK Fridays, I've been using a depth map and I'll use it again today. And it doesn't always work. Sometimes Photoshop doesn't get that depth map just right. But you know what? On an image like this, it really does a really good job. To create the depth map, what we need to do is go to the multi-mask panel, hold down your command or control key, and click this button right here. When you do, you will generate a depth map, as you can see right here. Now, I want to say something about this. If you're having any issues creating a depth map, on the screen right now, you'll see a comment from a viewer and Tony Kuiper's response to him. You may be having this issue. You may want to pause the video and read this. This may help you out. Also, if you've never installed the depth blur neural filter, what you need to do is come up here to filter, go to neural filters, come down here to depth blur. If you have a little icon like this, a little cloud with a down arrow, click on that on depth blur and you will download the depth blur filter because that's where the depth map is being created. I just wanted to point that out. And once you've command or control click that little target button on the multi-mask panel, click save as channel only. And when you do that, you'll notice there is that depth map right down there in your channels. And then just click and drag it down to the little plus sign and you'll create another copy of that. And next, come to the Combo or CX panel and click the Invert button. You will invert that, and this will become your foreground depth map. So double-click this and type in something like FG for foreground, and then come to this depth map, click on it, double-click it, and let's type BG for background for this one. And then come and click on the RGB, and you will see your image back. And now it's time for the foreground balance and contrast. So what we're going to do is 
click on the color grading tool button and there's your color grading tool and then come to your layer mask calculator don't you love it click on it click on fg for foreground and click this button to apply it and the cool thing here is it will take the foreground into consideration it'll get the strongest adjustment which will leave more distance in the image and that's the beauty of this depth map and now let's adjust i'll start out with midtone so i'll click on the midtone button and I want to really lighten up these midtones. I'm going to drag this over. Now, when you drag this, you don't see a change until you release the click of your mouse. I'm going to take this over to right there, 58. And now we'll click on the shadow button and add some shadow contrast. I'll drag this slider to the left to darken. And we'll take it over to like right here, minus 34. Now, check this out. Here is before. I'm just shutting off the layer by clicking on the eye. Here's before and here's after. But see how we have all that depth in there. And next, we're going to work on the background. To add another color grading tool, click this plus on the color grading tool. That adds another color grading tool. Click the layer mask button again. This time, we're going to click BG for background. Click this button to apply it. And there it is. And now we can adjust. I'll start with midtone, so I'll click on the midtone button. Now, I don't want to open those midtones up too much. I'm going to drag this brightness slider to the right over to about right here, plus 10. And now we'll click on the shadow button. And now remember, this is in the distance, so I don't want to add too much contrast here. So I'm going to take this shadow slider and drag it to the left. Not too much, but right to here, minus 12. Now, let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. But see all that nice distance we have. We have a lot more contrast up here and less contrast back here, thanks to the depth map and the balance and contrast adjustments. At this point, I always like to see how far I've come. So I'm going to click this button on the combo panel, the before after button. Here's before we started here and now we're here. And I really like it. And we have the nice mood still in the image. But let's keep working. I study the image now. I'm looking at the water, and the next thing I would like to do is give it a little bit more saturation. After each adjustment, if you study the image, your, your eye will let you know what needs to be done next. It takes a little bit of time sometimes to figure it out, but it will come to you. Sometimes you just need to walk away and get a fresh start. I need to get to my multi mass panel. My color grading tool's in the way, but click the X. Nothing changes on your color grading layers. And we want to use this button right here. Click on it. It's for color masks. And I love this. You get a color picker. And what I do is get one of the tones in the water, like some good color, like maybe right here represents a lot of what's in that water. So I'm going to click that and click OK. And now you can see I have a very weak area here. You see that? So what I'm going to do is take this brightness slider and drag it to the right over to somewhere right about here. And now we can see that. And now I'm going to take this top handle and drag it a little bit to the left and see how I can add more water. Like, look down in here. You see that? So we can make adjustments here and fine tune it. So I think right there is good. And now we can lighten this up even more. If we click on the level adjustment right here, we can refine this mask. We're creating a mask, by the way. I'm going to take this slider and drag it to the left. And I'll drag it over to right there, 156. Now, this is for midtones. I'm going to drag this to the left a little bit. And I'll drag it to right there, 1.25. So everything is lightened up, but I maintain detail in here. Now, I don't want all this area up in the top here. So what we can do is click on your marquee tool selection button. And what I'll do is just drag a marquee on the water's edge right here like this and bring it over to about here. And then click this button to mask the mask. Click it. A Gaussian blur dialog comes up. And I just want to give it a little bit of a blur radius, maybe like about, you know, I don't know, maybe four pixels and click OK. And I've selected that water right there. And now we can output that to a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking this button. And there we can see that mask on the hue saturation adjustment layer. And now for an adjustment, I'll take the saturation slider and drag it to the right over to like right there, plus 26. And then I'll come up to the hue. I'm going to shift this hue a little bit to the left to like, I don't know, right here, minus eight. And now I want to just darken this up a little bit. I'll just use the lightness slider to do that. I'll drag it to the left and I'll take it over to minus eight as well. Now, let me shut this off. Here's the before and here's the after, before and after. 
So there is our water. Just a little bit of saturation. Not too much, but I think it is helpful and pleasing to the eye. And now upon further observation, I would like to bring all this land area up in saturation a little bit. Not much, but a little. But we can use another color mask. So let's click on the color mask button again. And this time I want to pick, I'm going to pick an area back here. Click right here and click OK. And now we can see how we've selected just those colors. And now let's just brighten that up a little bit. So I'll take the brightness slider and I'll drag it over to the right. And I think I'll go right here. See how that just lightens everything up? We'll output that to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And there we can see that mask. And let's pull up that saturation. I'm going to take it over to right there, plus 26. And I'll just darken it up just a little wee bit. Because here's the thing with yellow. Whenever you increase the saturation of yellows, and for other colors as well, but yellow more so than others, the area tends to lighten up and I need to tame that down and that's what I'm doing with the lightness. My lightness now is at a minus six and this lightness slider is good when you give it extra saturation. If it gets too light you may want to darken it with a lightness slider or if you want to add a little bit more lightness to a certain color you've targeted you can use it. Now when I study the image I'm looking to bring up some detail. I think I could bring up some really nice detail here and I'll use a soft pop action to do it. I love soft pop. So I'm going to click on soft pop. If your actions aren't open, click your TK action button and then click on soft pop. And now you can see I have a pop of color, a pop of detail, a pop of contrast, but I don't like it over the entire image. So you know what? We can use our depth map. Here's our soft pop layer right here. So let's click on our layer mask calculator, click on foreground, click this button to apply that layer mask to the soft pop and check this out. Now you'll notice when I shut this off, this area here will have more of the detail, color pop and contrast. This will have less, but it'll still have some. I'll shut off soft pop. There's before and here is after. Again, before and after. And you'll notice we have more pop detail and contrast up here, less back here, but we still have it back here. And hopefully you can see that if you're watching in 4K, you probably can. Usually after using soft pop, I like to lighten up my image a little bit in the midtones. So to do that, it's very simple. Come up to the multi-mask panel, click on the luminosity mask button, click on midtones one. That's the most subtle of the midtones. You have midtones one, two, and three. They get lighter as they go across, but they're all midtones. I'll put that to a curves adjustment layer. I'm not going to adjust the curve and then simply click on the screen blend mode button and my midtones are lightened. Now I think they're a little too light. So what I'll do is take my opacity back to somewhere right about here, 80%. And now let me shut off this layer by clicking the eye. Here's before and here's after. A nice little mid-tone lightening, which compensates for a little bit of darkening I get with soft pop. And next up, this is something new that I'm adding to my workflow. I'd like to look at different zonal ranges of the image, for instance, shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and zones in between. Now, with TK9 on the multi-mask panel, if you click on this blend if button, you'll notice we have zones like zone one, two, three, four, and five. And I don't use all five zones. Sometimes I do. I'll target the zone I think I need. And in this image, I think I need zone one. So I'll click on the zone one button and all the light areas represent the areas in zone one. I'll, I'll put this to a brightness contrast adjustment layer by clicking this button. And these are the darker tones of the image. So I'm going to take this slider and drag it to the left to right here, a minus 103. Now, let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. Isn't that cool? You can also work with the contrast if you need it. I don't need it right here, but I'm happy with that adjustment. Next, we're going to figure out another zone. But first, let me say something. You'll notice I have a layer mask here. I don't have to put a layer mask here. I could have put blend if here. On the next two zones, I'll use blend if. In my notes, I used blend if. This time I use blend if mask creation, but made a mask. But you can also just put blend if down there. The advantage of putting blend if on this layer is a little smaller file size in the end because you're not putting a pixel layer here. Back in this area here, I'd like to tone it down a little bit. So I'll find a zone that will accomplish that. So we're going to click on the blend if button again for mask creation. And this time, you know, we could look at zone two. Let's look at zone three. 
Zone three is represented by the light areas on this mask here. So I'm going to use that, and I think that'll be fine. But this time, I will output it still to a brightness contrast adjustment layer. But if you hold your shift key down and click this, now we have a brightness contrast layer with blend if on it. So that saves a little file space, as I said. But another benefit is you could click this button on the multi-mask panel and go into edit blend if mode and adjust these handles and tweak that adjustment. So that's another good reason to apply blend if to the layer. For now, I'll close edit blend if by clicking the X. And now let's make the adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and darken that a little bit, not much. So I'll take the brightness slider and drag it to the left over to like right there, minus 15. And then I want to add some contrast. So I'll take this slider and drag it to the right to right there, plus 19. So let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Just kind of toning down those tones in zone three. And now I'm looking at this area up in the sky. I'd like to lighten it up a bit. And let's find a zone for that. So we'll click this button again. And I already used zone three, so let's try zone four. Here's zone four. This area right here is what I'm interested in. Nothing down here. If I go to zone five, you can see it's looking for really light areas. But I want zone four, so that's going to be good. I'm going to output it again to a brightness contrast adjustment layer by holding my shift key down and clicking. That puts the edit blend diff right on the layer. And by the way, if you click this button right here, you can see the tones that it's targeting in magenta. Isn't that nice? So remember that this is a good little button to work with. So click this again. We'll go back to the image and now we'll make the adjustment. I'm only looking in this area, so I'll increase brightness by dragging this to the right. And I think I'll stop right here at plus 25. Now I also want to decrease the contrast a little bit to maintain this foggy look. And so we would have lower contrast and fog. So I'll take this contrast and drag it to the left. And I'll drag it over to right there, minus 32. Now let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. See how it lightens it up, but I maintain that foggy look. But it's affecting the foreground and I don't want that. But we can fix that by clicking on the sky selection button on either the combo or CX panel. And then click on your layer mask calculator. Click on active selection and click this button to apply it. And you see we're only getting the sky. We see the marching ants, so we can just click this button to deselect. So now check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. We're getting near the end of the edit. And at this point, I always like to try the color luminosity action. You'll find it in your TK actions. If your actions aren't open, click your TK button, click on color loom. What I like to do is adjust all of the colors, lightening or darkening them. And for instance, reds, if I start to slide the red slider, you can see how I can affect reds or yellows, any greens, any cyans or blues and I just adjust them and stop where I think it looks good as well as magentas. I'm going to go ahead and enter the numbers in here from my notes and I'll show you the before and after. Right now this layer is turned off for color luminosity. I entered the numbers from my notes for each one of the colors. So this is before and now let me turn this layer on and here is the after. As I said I'm almost done but I'm still studying the image and I think it needs a vignette. So I always like to try the basic vignette in your actions, you'll find it right here. Click vignette. A Gaussian blur dialog comes up and I just click OK. And there's my vignette. I'm going to shut it off. Here's before and here's after. But I can do a little better. And I always like to click on the edit blend if button and try like a no darks one. It just protects the dark tones and click the button again. Here's a no darks two. And I like that. So now let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. And I think that is really helpful. It keeps the viewer's eye in your image, which is what you want, right? Again, studying the image. I think it needs a little exposure increase and that's easy. Come up to the multi mask panel. Click the X if you have your edit blend if still open and click this button right here for an exposure adjustment layer. And what I do is just click on this field right here, hold my shift key down, click on my up arrow as I'm holding my shift key down. Here's one tenth of a stop. I'll click it one more time, two tenths of a stop. And I like that gives me a little bit of exposure increase. And finally, the last thing I want to do is just increase the yellow saturation a little bit bit. And then I'll have a little bonus for you at the very end. So stay till the end and watch that. But let's increase the saturation a little bit. What we'll do is click on the hue saturation adjustment layer. 
but we'll get clever here. And what we'll do is click on our layer mask calculator. And I mainly want it to come up in the background just a little bit. So we're going to click the background channel and apply it to this layer by clicking this button right here. As you can see, there it is. And now I'll just increase that yellow saturation. So come up here to master. This is a drop down. Click it. Click on yellows. And we're just going to increase the yellow saturation to somewhere right about here, plus 30. Now it gets a little too light. So we'll offset that with lightness by dragging the slider to the left to darken up the yellows. And I'll take it over to minus 15. Now let me shut this off. This is going to be subtle. Here is before and here is after. Again, before and after. And that is it. But here comes the bonus. Yesterday, when I was working out this edit for TK Friday, I thought, wouldn't this look really nice in black and white? Well, if you've watched some of my recent uh, TK Friday videos, you know I love the new TK Magic Mixer that Tony created, and this is awesome. So here's my Magic Mixer, and what I'll do is click this Randomize button, and we can see a black and white image, and right there it looks really good, but I'm going to keep clicking the Randomize button, and as you see, every time I click it, now that looks really cool, we get different looks, so I'll click it again. There's another look. I'll click it again, click it again. And I like that too. I'll click it one more time. Man, I like that too. But then you could use these forward and reverse buttons so I can come back through and look at some of the ones I had. And let me find one that I really liked. I kind of like this. It's a little light down here, but then you could come and adjust these sliders here. Cyan, red, magenta, green, yellow, blue. So sometimes I'll just tweak those a little bit and see if I can like hone that in a little bit more somewhere around there, maybe, oh, that's too much. I'm going to go this way. Right about there looks good. And then you could click this button and it gives you a color loom layer. And then you could come and do final little fine tuning adjustments for all the different color ranges. Okay. So it's really cool, right? And let's go to cyan here. See, make that water a little darker and blues will also affect that water a little bit and the sky up at the top. Maybe something like that. Let's see if there's any magentas in here. Maybe a little bit of magenta up in there, but maybe something like that. So let me shut this off. This is without the black and white conversion and this is with it. But the TK Magic Mixer makes it really easy to make black and white conversions and I love it. And it also works with color images too. Now, the TK Magic Mixer was something Tony and I kind of developed together. Tony did all the coding, but I had a lot of different ideas and we kind of brainstormed and came up with this idea, which is now the Magic Mixer. And it's really fun. And if you love black and white, you need to get the Magic Mixer. And it's only $10. I'll have links for it in the description below this video. When you purchase it, you are really helping out my channel. And I appreciate that. And you're getting a really useful tool for making black and white conversions and also working on color images. But now let me go back to what my original edit was. I'll shut off the Magic Mixer. And this is the final edit. Now, let me go ahead and click the before button. Here is before we started out here and we end up here. I think it came out really nice and we maintained that foggy look. And the depth map was really crucial in this edit today. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's full edit tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.